Interstate 5 was built in 1917, And since it wasn't originally designed to handle the kind of crazy traffic it now faces, it's time for a major facelift. However, rebuilding the bridge will cost a whopping $7.5 billion. But is traffic congestion the only reason for this project? And why is the U.S. willing to spend such a ridiculous amount on this bridge? Well, there's only one way to find out. The major problem. The Interstate 5 Bridge, which connects Portland, Oregon and Vancouver, Washington, has been around for over 100 years. But not many people realize it's actually two bridges. One was built in 1917, the other in 1958. Back then, the first bridge was state-of-the-art, providing much-needed access over the Columbia River. The second bridge was added later on to keep up with increasing traffic. Together, these bridges form a vital transportation link, handling over 138,000 vehicles a day across four narrow lanes. But here's the thing. While the bridge may have served well for decades, it's now outdated, overburdened, and extremely unsafe. At first glance, the I-5 bridge might seem fine, but looks can be deceiving. Both structures are classified as functionally obsolete, but that's just a fancy way of saying the bridges weren't designed to handle the traffic loads or speed limits we see today. Back when the bridge first opened in 1917, the idea of thousands of cars zooming across it every day wasn't even a consideration. Then the second bridge added in 1958 was built with an expectation of lighter use than what we see now. Fast forward to today and you've got bumper to bumper congestion, frustrated commuters, and endless traffic delays. But the biggest headache comes from the lift span that allows boats to pass under the bridge. When the lift's activated, which happens about 300 times a year, traffic grinds to a halt on both sides causing massive backups that can stretch for miles. This bridge isn't just inconvenient, it's an anchor dragging down the entire region's transportation network. But traffic congestion isn't the only problem with the I-5, as there are far more serious concerns, safety issues. If you thought heavy traffic was bad, wait till you hear this. The I-5 bridge isn't just outdated, it's dangerous. It was built before modern earthquake-resistant designs were developed, which means it's highly vulnerable to seismic activity. The Pacific Northwest is sitting on a ticking time bomb thanks to the Cascadia subduction zone, which could produce a massive earthquake at any time. If that happens, experts warn that the current bridge could collapse, cutting off a critical lifeline between Washington and Oregon. Imagine the chaos that would follow. Without a functioning bridge, emergency responders would have no easy way to travel across the river. Supplies wouldn't get to where they need to go. And worst of all, lives could be lost. But the dangers aren't limited to earthquakes. The narrow lanes and outdated design make accidents more likely. There are no emergency lanes, which means even a minor fender bender can cause hours of gridlock. Now, I know you're probably wondering how it got to the point where a bridge this important is also this dangerous. Well, the answer boils down to neglect, as well as other factors we'll discuss later in this video. But before we do, let's take a moment to ponder on the outrageous cost of rebuilding this old bridge. The $7.5 billion question. Why so expensive? So why does it cost $7.5 billion to replace this bridge? Well, the answer lies in the scope and complexity of the project. Building a new bridge isn't just about slapping down some asphalt and calling it a day. The new structure needs to address the problems of the past while meeting the needs of the future. First, the new bridge will be significantly taller and wider to accommodate more vehicles, cyclists, and pedestrians. It will also eliminate the lift span, reducing traffic disruptions. That sounds great, right? But it also means the design's more complicated, which drives up costs. To add to that, the project includes plans for a light rail line, which is a hot topic of debate. Supporters say the rail will ease traffic congestion and provide a green alternative to driving, but opponents argue it's too expensive and unnecessary. Either way, integrating a light rail system into the bridge is no easy feat, which explains part of the high price tag. And we haven't even mentioned the environmental regulations. Any project on the Columbia River has to meet strict rules to protect wildlife and water quality. That means more time, more permits, and more money. You might be thinking, all this for one bridge? But the truth is, with the challenges involved, $7.5 billion starts to sound a bit more reasonable. Funding battles and politics. Now, you'd think everyone would be on board with replacing a crumbling bridge, but it's been a long, messy road to get this project off the ground. One of the biggest hurdles has been figuring out who's going to pay for what. Washington and Oregon are supposed to share the cost, but that's easier said than done. Both states have argued over how much each should contribute, which has delayed progress for years. Then there's the debate over the light rail system. Some residents argue that the rail isn't necessary, especially since it adds to the already high cost. Others believe it's essential to the region's future as it provides a green alternative to driving. 
Environmental groups have also had concerns about the project's impact on the river's ecosystem. Balancing all these competing interests has been a major headache for planners. Thankfully, federal funding has now been approved, but the states will need to finalize their contributions. With everything that's happened so far, you have to wonder, will they ever get it together in time? What happens if they don't replace it? So, what if they don't replace the bridge? Simply put, doing nothing isn't an option. The I-5 bridge is too important to the region's economy to let it fall into disrepair. If the bridge fails, the resulting economic impact would be devastating. The I-5 corridor is a major trade route, and any disruption would affect the movement of goods up and down the West Coast. Businesses rely on this route to get their product to market. Without it, supply chains could grind to a halt, affecting not just local businesses, but the entire country. And then there's the human impact. If the bridge were to collapse, it would cut off a vital transportation link between two states. Commuters, emergency responders, and travelers would be affected. Repairing the existing bridge isn't a viable solution either, as patching up a century-old structure would cost almost as much as building a new one and wouldn't address the underlying safety issues. When you think about it that way, $7.5 million doesn't seem like a lot compared to the potential losses. But the question remains, will they act in time? When can we expect to see the new bridge? The plan is to start construction within the next few years, with the goal of completing the project by 2033. But as with any large infrastructure project, there's always a chance of delays. Between securing funding, obtaining environmental permits, and dealing with public opposition, there's still a lot of hurdles to overcome. However, planners are optimistic that things will stay on track this time. If all goes well, the new bridge will offer a smoother, safer commute for drivers, cyclists, and pedestrians alike. It'll also provide a sustainable option for future generations, thanks to the inclusion of the light rail system. But will it be enough to meet the growing transportation needs of the region? Perhaps understanding the dimensions of the new bridge will give us an answer to that question. Expected dimensions of the new bridge. The new interstate bridge is expected to be a substantial structure designed to accommodate heavy traffic, public transit, and pedestrian movement across the Columbia River. While final design elements are still being finalized, the proposed length is expected to span over 2,500 feet to ensure seamless connectivity between Portland, Oregon, and Vancouver, Washington. I gotta mention that this is just an estimate, as official numbers have not yet been released and the bridge is still in its planning stages. Nonetheless, the bridge will feature a combination of fixed span and movable elements, with one option being a double-deck truss design, providing multiple lanes for vehicles and auxiliary lines to help ease congestion. For clearance, the bridge will have a vertical height sufficient to support river traffic without interrupting daily marina operations, with depth specifications aimed at structural durability under varied weather conditions. Additionally, shared-use paths for biking and walking are part of the project to maintain sustainable transportation options. All in all, the final design will take public feedback into account with an environmental impact assessment determining the best configuration to suit both commuter and environmental needs. That being said, how much of an impact will this new bridge have on the economics of its surrounding cities? Economic Impact of the New Bridge Without a doubt, the economic benefits of the new bridge is going to be significant during both construction and long-term operation. Throughout the building phase, the project expected to create thousands of jobs, boosting employment in construction, engineering, and related industries in both Washington and Oregon. Local businesses are likely to benefit from increased activity as construction workers spend money on housing, food, and services. After the bridge is completed, smoother traffic flow will reduce travel times and transportation costs, fostering trade between the two states. This improved mobility is also expected to attract new businesses, increase property values, and enhance the livability of surrounding areas. The introduction of public transit options along the bridge could further reduce traffic congestion, saving commuters time and increasing productivity. With the enhanced connection between Portland and Vancouver, tourism and local economies on both sides of the Columbia River are likely to see sustained growth over the coming years. These developments align with regional economic strategies aimed at ensuring the infrastructure serves both commuters and the broader community for decades to come. Environmental Challenges now the construction of the new interstate bridge faces several significant environmental challenges. One of the major concerns is the potential displacement of residential and commercial properties with estimates indicating that as many as 43 homes and 36 businesses may need to be acquired to make way for the project. This displacement raises issues regarding community impact and the need for adequate compensation and relocation options for affected residents. Moreover, the project must address its environmental footprint during construction, as construction activities can lead to increased air pollution, noise, and waste. The Interstate Bridge Replacement Program is committed to using sustainable practices, such as utilizing low-carbon materials and recycling old bridge components to minimize environmental harm. Lastly, there are concerns about navigation on the Columbia River. 
particularly if the new bridge design limits the vertical clearances for vessels, potentially affecting maritime activities. This multifaceted approach to environmental challenges highlights the project's complexity and the necessity for careful planning and community engagement throughout the process. Replacing the I-5 bridge isn't just about fixing an old structure. It's about preparing it for the future. With increasing traffic, the constant risk of earthquakes, and the need for sustainable transportation, the new bridge will be a game changer for the Pacific Northwest. Yeah, seven and a half billion dollars is a lot of money. But when you consider the alternatives, it becomes clear that this investment is necessary. The real question isn't whether the U.S. can afford to build a new bridge. It's whether they can afford not to. But what do you think? Is the new I-5 bridge worth the cost? Hit the comments below and let us know your thoughts. We're committed to releasing two videos a week. Like, share, subscribe, and hit that bell icon for more visionary builds.